Okay, I'm just going to quickly talk you through side chaining, which is a really useful thing to be able to do uh, in Logic using the compressor tools. Um, uh, not just compressor, you can send a side chain signal to other synths, you can send it to EST and stuff. That'll be coming in a new tutorial. I'll do a whole video section just uh, for the EST synth because it's quite heavy duty. Uh, just created a really cheesy pattern here. Uh, just thrown together just to quickly show you some side chaining uh, which you could do with getting your head around pretty quickly actually because it's used a lot um, to get a lot of dynamic mixes especially with club music um, it's used to get that very uh, pumpy kind of uh, dance music sound I'm going to show you how you can how you can get towards that um, so what I've got is I've just got uh, I'm just going to sh quickly show you through some of the sounds we've got we've got an arpeggiator some strings in the background a kick drum the bass a little loop we've got that horrible enigma sample and i've got some white noise just got a synth just got vanguard just literally playing some white noise and i've filtered the white noise uh, with an eq just to get rid of some of it now on the strings there's an eq that was built in just to give it a bit of top end and i've got this eos um, it's uh, one of the reverbs i bought just to give it a nice uh, nice lot of reverb gives it that kind of roomy sound um so what we're going to do is um create some side chaining now, what I want to sidechain and get pumping are the is the white noise, which I'm just going to label there, and this one is my bass. So what I'm going to want to do is get that kind of pumping sound on the white noise, and this is the easiest way to show you. If I put a compressor in, and what I'm going to do is um, use the class AR um, circuit type. Uh, refer back to the compressor video if you want to know more about the circuit types uh, but this one works really well with um, this type of side chaining now what I'm going to do is basically get it pumping quite a lot so I'm going to turn the ratio up quite a bit and I want to see that white noise kind of coming down in, in game reduction so I can actually take it down even more than that I think I'm going to say side chain detection sec set it to the the sum rather than the max that's similar in a way to how the peak in the rms works um. what i'm also going to do before that is i'm going to turn my channel eq up because i'm not getting that much volume coming into the actual compressor so i'm going to turn that up that's better better volume a little bit too much in fact I'm just going to turn that down to somewhere like 12 dBs or something better so I'm going to turn off some of these tracks just to hear I want to just hear the kick drum because this will give you a real indication as to what sound we're after so I'm then going to activate the side chain now the side chain is basically the detection circuit for the compressor so what is the compressor listening to so at the moment the compressor it doesn't have a side chain activated so it's listening to its input which at the moment is the white noise so if we listen to just the white noise the white noise is telling the white noise how loud the white noise is so depending on how where the threshold is we get more gain taken out of the system now what I'm going to want to do is tell the side chain to listen to the kick drum. So every time the kick drum happens, the volume is going to turn it, the white noise down. And then when the kick drum disappears, the volume is going to come up. So you're going to get that kind of kind of pumping sound. So this is what the side chain detection does. It basically changes the compressor and says, no, I don't want you to listen to the white noise to tell you what's too loud. I want you to listen to something else to tell you what's too loud. I've also done this in the routing um, video so you can see a different application which is where I've um, side chained an uh, echo on a vocal from the vocal track and um, I'll refer you to that video as to why I did that um, so let's just uh, link it up so side chain at the moment um, you can side chain from an input channel so you can actually sing into something this is how DJ mics work um, if I selected that to be the actual input um, 
and say I put a compressor over the main mix. As soon as I speak into the microphone, the main mix would get turned down. This is how DJs duck the backing track. So whenever you hear the DJ speaking over the record, it automatically turns itself down. No, they are not automatically turning it down by holding the, the volume control. They're far too lazy for that. They have what's known as a ducker, which is literally a compressor set to set to quite a high thresh, um, high ratio so that it will turn the backing track down. So the sidechain can work for the input. Uh, and if we had an audio track, if I add a simple audio track here, that will then also have the option of being the audio track. You'll notice that we've now got audio one as being an option, but we don't have instrument tracks as an option so this is a bit of a problem because I want to turn my kick drum to be the the trigger for the side chain but I don't have it as an option so we need to do another step which is essentially creating I'm just gonna delete that audio track so don't need it I'm going to create another aux track so this is another use for an aux track so what I'm going to do is on the kick which is this track I'm going to call it kick so it's obvious I'm going to send it to a bus and I'm going to call that my trigger because this is triggering my output now an, Im uh, an important step in this is that if I send this if I hold down the option key and click on the send it will automatically send it to zero which means that it's sending it's not sending any more of it or any less of it it's just sending an exact copy across to this this bus because it's set to zero decibels now what I also want to do is if I hold click on that and say pre fader it will turn green what this means is that if I turn this fader down, it will still send it at the same level because it's irrespective of what the fader is doing because it's pre the fader. So you're sending a certain amount of volume before the fader has a has a uh, an effect on how much you send. If that was set to post fader and I turned this down, the send would get turned down as well. So this channel wouldn't get its trigger anymore. So. Uh, they they each have their own uh, own ways of working. This is useful for when you want to send something and always be get send that. Uh, usually you want post fader sends uh, to send to reverbs and stuff like that. So when you turn the vocal channel down, for example, the reverb dies with it. Otherwise you'll you'll have no dry signal and lots of wet signal. So that's one of the steps is to set that up. The next step is to actually turn the output off. I'm going to say no output because otherwise I'm going to get two kick drums. I'm going to get double the volume of kick drum so all I want is for this kick to be sent to this bus and you'll see that it will be happening if I unmute that you notice that we've now got the two kicks if this was set to output it's double the volume so we don't want that so now what we can do now is set the side chain to bus one so the sidechain can actually work from buses, inputs, and audio tracks, not instrument tracks. So that's one way we can do it. So now that I've set it to bus one, you'll notice now that the detection circuit is detecting the kick drum. So now the gain reduction is gonna work every time it gets the input from bus one. So now if I put the white noise in, you'll get this kind of pumping sound, and we can change the uh, the, the attack and the release to get different sounds and we can we can choose different circuit types to get different sounds as well that one doesn't sound very nice or that that one sounds pretty good actually it's getting the effect I want That's even better. So now when we put it back in, you can actually hear the effect it's giving. Now what I can do is I can do the same thing for the strings. I'm going to put another compressor on them. I'm just going to turn the white noise off a minute so we can hear what it does to the strings. So I'm going to select my bus one as the input for the side chain. compare it no bounce lots of bounce put in the white noise change the volume and 
hold down option and click the mutes. Do the same thing on that effect as well. Put the side chain to plus one. So just to show you, I'm just going to hold option and click these just to bypass the compressors and give you a before and after taste. Obviously the white noise makes it sound a bit naff, but put them back in. So you get that kind of bouncy club sound, which is uh, seems to be all the rage right now. Um, this isn't just relegated to club sounds because this is a really useful technique for uh, rock and pop recording as well. Uh, it's a useful way of getting very densely packed mixes to sound dynamic because what you can actually do is you could send all your guitars, for example, if you've got very angry, distorted, double-tracked, panned guitars that are getting in the way of the vocal, send the guitars to a group, compress them, and set the side chain trigger as the vocal. So every time the vocal comes in, the compressor is just going to bring those guitars down a shade. As soon as the vocal disappears, compressor stops working, guitars come up in volume. So it's not just for the uh, Swedish House Mafia fans out there. It is also for um, uh, users a lot uh, in rock, rock and roll. You can also compress, for example, the bass, the bass guitar, um, to compress ever so slightly when the kick happens. So side chain it from the kick so that you can always hear that kick and the, the, the bass just ducks behind it a little bit. So it has a lot of um, uses uh, for lots of other things, uh, not just this kind of bouncy club sound. So experiment with it. Uh, it's probably quite a little bit to, to get your head round. Um, but watch the videos a couple of times and hopefully you'll, you'll pick up how to do it. It's quite simple and once you get the hang of it, uh, you'll be finding lots of ways to use it. So enjoy.